Hey guys, it's Holly. Welcome back to the channel. I am going to do a quick video on plantar fasciitis and um, kind of how I'm dealing with mine. So plantar fasciitis is basically an inflammation of the fascia in your foot. So fascia is like essentially a connective tissue and we have it, it lines our whole entire body. So it lies underneath our skin on top of our muscles. And so I know it sounds really weird, but if you've ever dissected a frog or whatever, it's like there's this white membrane that lies under the skin over the muscle. That's what fascia is. So a lot of times fascia can clump up and cause all kinds of problems. Um, it can get inflamed and cause problems throughout the whole body. So sometimes as a massage therapist, I notice that people will actually have lumps of fascia, not necessarily muscular knots, but actual lumps of fascia tissue and that can create pain and discomfort as well. So there are so many different things um, that can occur and cause, fascia can definitely get inflamed is what I'm saying. So when it comes to plantar fasciitis, there are quite a few different approaches you can take and quite a few different things that you can do um, along with anything because all it is is inflammation and inflammation can be dealt with in so many different ways. So. As a massage therapist, I know so much about this that it's really hard to know where to begin. So I'm just gonna tell you what I've been doing. So I've known quite a few people that have had plantar fasciitis, clients, friends. Uh, my ex-business partner years ago, she had it really, really bad. And it can definitely get really painful. It's It can get to where it's like a stabbing pain. Sometimes it's really not that bad, but it can progress. Sometimes it comes and goes. So for me, it does come and go, but I just developed this not even a few months ago. And so it has been uncomfortable. Unfortunately, it does not interfere with my life because it has not gotten that extreme. But I do experience, um, you know, some mild to moderate pain and discomfort. And then particularly at night, I spend a lot of time on my feet doing housework, taking care of the kids. And then also as a massage therapist and all these things that I do out and about, I don't do a lot of sitting throughout the day. So there's definitely a lot of pressure on my feet. So that can lead to plantar fasciitis, but also being too sedentary can lead to that as well. And I think there are so many different factors. It can be genetic. It can be so many different things. So anyways, long story short. So stretching is a huge thing. There are all these different stretches you can do. And I will be showing you guys some of that in the future. Um, but not in this video because I don't have time. Because <laughs> that's going to take a long time. Um, not a long time, but it would take a few extra minutes. So stretching is a huge thing. So looking up some videos and um, Googling different types of plantar fasciitis stretches is gonna be huge. Your calves, your feet, your ankles, all of that staying active. And I know like I, there's this huge thing. People are always like, oh, you need to rest. You need to rest. Like, yes, you do need rest. But if you are not active and you just baby yourself every time you're dealing with something, um, it's, gonna take longer to heal and I'm just gonna put it that way but I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video but you guys have heard me say it before like you can't always baby every little thing um, because you won't get better that way or it'll take you longer so stretching um, exercise plenty of light to moderate exercise making sure that you're eating healthy anti-inflammatory diet avoiding certain things I'm not gonna get into all of that either but that's a huge thing staying hydrated um, drinking water, electrolytes, not things like soda and sugar-filled um, sports drinks and things of that nature. So supplementation, think about considering an anti-inflammatory uh, supplement, a good multivitamin, um, lots of antioxidants into the diet, and there are so many different things that you can do. So next you can use things like creams and lotions that can help a whole lot. A CBD is a huge thing. Some people will reach for kind of like a menthol type of pain relieving, like an icy hot. You can do stuff like that too. It really just depends on you and what your preference is. Essential oils. So many essential oils are really good for the inflammation. Um, I would recommend trying for plantar fasciitis, recommend peppermint, spearmint, wintergreen, um, 
maybe a little bit of a little bit of lemongrass i would say but really there are quite a few different essential oils that would help with that as well some eucalyptus for sure really the list goes on um so then i have bio our bio relief salve from bio Rains. And so I've been using this a whole lot on uh, my foot and fortunately I only have it in one side on one side I'm sorry so I only have plantar fasciitis on in my right foot so fortunately I don't have it in both but it does get to where it is like shooting stabbing pain um, usually at least a couple times a day I will feel that yes it's not comfortable it is what it is so but yeah bio relief salve totally awesome definitely recommend it um, but yeah, some salves, some lotions, creams, things of that nature. And then also you want to make sure that you are, you can use like uh, alternate between heat and ice, which is my absolute favorite for getting rid of inflammation on any area of the body. But alternating between heat and ice is very, very beneficial. You can also use things like not only hot and cold packs, but you can use, I have this, uh, cavitation machine and I've done a separate video on that but what it does is it helps with like it's kind of like an infrared type of thing but it also has like an EMS function and some other functions like vibrations and it can really help to break up some of that inflammation as well so I do also use that on my foot sometimes not all the time so I do all of these things I do still have inflammation I do still feel pain but really the list is endless on the amount of things that you can do for plantar fasciitis um good supportive shoes can be very beneficial i don't recommend wearing them 24 7. i think it's important to do your grounding and get your feet on the earth the grass the concrete um barefoot inside your house i think it's important to go barefoot as well i don't think you want to fully support the foot to that extent 24 7 because it's not going to allow your foot to kind of like you know naturally we weren't designed to have these super supportive shoes on as humans so we were designed more to be in contact with the earth and that's also going to mess with your grounding which messes with your vibration and everything else and it helps you so much to alkalize your body and just come back down to earth when you're able to ground so i do recommend wearing some supportive shoes at least you know a few times a week depending on the level of pain that you're experiencing so that's going to be different for everyone so me i'm still kind of on the mild side of things but that's also where you want to catch it early and prevent it from getting worse so it's kind of like i would like to liken plantar fasciitis to sciatica because sciatica which i have had that on and off for the past 10 years and if any of you guys have had that which i'm sure many of you have it's basically an inflammation of the sciatic nerve and it hurts and it's a pain that can go from your lower back your butt all the way down your leg all the way down into your foot because that sciatic nerve is so long so anyways um lastly i do want to talk about some different actual things that i have been using that have been really helpful as well so these right here are some very basic um, insoles for plantar fasciitis so you can obviously find more expensive ones but these are really supportive um, supporting the arches is very beneficial for plantar fasciitis so another thing is these right here I have not used these yet but these I got on Amazon they're just like five or six dollars and you use like this put this part goes underneath your foot okay so then you put it on your foot and then this part would go like on top of your foot and this is just supposed to help provide additional cushioning and support so have not tried these yet but um definitely something you can consider cheap easy to get these right here are similar um they're not really so much padded but they're supposed to be they're designed to be supportive so you would put this around your foot as well and it's hard for me to show you but you figure it out when you get them so those are kind of similar um these i've been using a lot but um, i can't really say they've helped a ton but that's just me so and then i have some uh, elastic sports tape so this right here this is called kt tape kinesiology therapeutic tape 
So it's just like any kind of sports tape or medical tape, whatever, you just take it and this would be like one. This is big enough for your foot, unless you have a really huge foot. Um, so then you just remove the backing and you would just use one of these like per day, like one or two per day, depending on, you know, if you take a shower midday or whatever. So, and it does stay on it, it adheres really well and it just provides additional support. So you just kind of like wrap it around your foot close to the heel, wherever you're feeling the pain. And this, I've been using these almost every day and they really do help. They also come in a lot of different colors like lime green and hot pink. It's kind of like a neon blue, but anyway, so, so far I think this has helped the most in terms of products that I've bought. And you can also use like certain um, compression socks and socks that are infused with like uh, silver or gold. They now have like these um, copper socks, kind of like the same way you can buy like copper um, knee braces or ankle braces. So actually, hold on a second. I would like to show you guys the uh, copper socks, but I have them in here. So give me just a second. So these are the copper socks. They just look like this. Um, and these are really cheap. You can get um, a three pack for like $12 or something like that off Amazon or eBay or whatever. So I got a couple of pairs of these um, and I actually haven't worn these yet because it's still really hot here in Texas and I haven't worn a lot of socks. I'm not going to lie. Um, so yeah. And a lot of the shoes I wear are kind of like... Um, the type of sneakers where you don't wear socks, you know, kind of like Vans or whatever. So anyways, yeah. So these are really good though. And I've heard really great things. People have had really great results with these. So those are physically some of the things I've been trying and things that I've bought. Um, so I do hope that kind of helps. There's so much more I want to say and so much more I want to get into when it comes to plantar fasciitis and I definitely will. So the next video I do on it, will probably consist of some of the stretching and I think that's going to be a really great idea to try but yeah um so again there are so many different things but these are just some of the things I've tried some of the things that work for me and I hope I've mentioned a few ideas that can help out also things like taking a bath in Epsom salt baking soda detoxing so many different things um, a foot soap with some baking soda and Epsom salt or even one or the other or some sea salt just kind of like experiment even throw a bath bomb in there and you can even do like a foot mask they actually have those um, so you can do all those kinds of things and all that stuff will really help but I think the main thing is just consistency and doing your best mixing it up and just figuring out what works for you and doing your best to prevent it from getting worse and that's really all you can do so I do liken it to sciatic nerve issues like I said before that's the best comparison I can really give um, based on my fairly limited amount of knowledge I have quite a bit of knowledge but in the same point um, I don't have all the knowledge so I hope this helps and I'll see you guys in the next video bye